So we're coming at you guys with another video. We had the fan here earlier. Um, we were in the booth. And as you see, I got a door sitting here on the sawhorses. I got it shimmed up so I could spray underneath. I was kind of going up underneath just enough of the edge because the panel covers the rest under there. Uh, and then, as of course, we got hanging here. And this is the high build primers uh, that's getting sanded in a little bit when it cools down. I'm going to explain a few things to y'all that happened today. It was actually a pretty miserable day. And this is a 1990 VW van. It's um, the when they started doing water cooled instead of air cooled engines. Um, the license plates are off it so I don't. I'm not against showing it to you guys. And uh, the guy I know, he converted the top to a camper top with like RV AC type system. So it can be took camping. And we even masked off inside as you can see. Uh, the guy I know, he did all this and um covered it all and uh we were spraying the primer on today so that's what i was going to get around to and one of the problems was um he already kind of sprayed up here on top like a, it's like a light gray that we're doing it's a nascent uh single stage i'll give you the can right there anyway um so we were spraying the high build we were trying to use it as a sealer originally and we were going to go straight into paint on top of that but we're using obviously like you can see a makeshift booth oh we even put in the lights too you guys we'll turn those on here and show you uh so now we got lights in there that are pretty bright and nice and uh see there you go and they light it up boom give me a good amount of light but uh really nice bulbs they use 100 watts but they put out about 900 an equivalent of light so i only put in four to catch all angles um because they adjust to the flaps turn and flex and but um nonetheless um we started, I started at 4.30 a.m. this morning setting up the booth. And uh, we got everything because we did the skirting taping this morning too, around six, but we got spraying at seven and it was like 81 degrees in here. I zapped the panels with the laser and it probably i mean it's probably still hot in here but where i'm at it's already 105 today so this panel's still 96 degrees and it's almost six o'clock in the afternoon so here's the thing is we were spraying the front here went real good and i got all this in and then when i went to come around here the temperature went up you know, I did this, or I did that door first, and then I came over here to do this door. And by like 8.30, I'd already gone up to 95. And no matter how close I got to adjust for the spray atomization, the spray drying in midair, I was getting this as wet as I could. I went all the way from a hand distance to almost three inches away. And just went faster with the hand speed and I was getting it done but I still got a rough finish because it, I just couldn't keep it wet enough you guys and it dried fast it's not bad we're just gonna because it's a high build and we really didn't need to high build it we're just gonna lightly scuff all this with like you know uh, red Brillo pads and like some lightly scuff it with some like 400 or whatever and then 
Well, we're just going to smooth it back over because we're happy with everything other than the primer went from spraying super smooth to spraying really rough because the temperature changed on us. But we're not here to fake the funk. We're giving you the real. And uh, that's what it is. So now we had to stop and because we had to let this fully cure due to the roughness, we had to get it smooth down all this stuff and then tomorrow i mean this is probably smooth because i i double coated this piece up here hanging uh this morning before it got too hot so this one actually should not need it um but i'll do it anyway just because we're doing the rest so where i'm at it can get all the way up to like 116 degrees we have lots of fires. This is an extremely, extreme, extreme hot weather conditions here where I live. I mean, I have had the fan going on me. I'm gonna be staying out here tonight in the shop on a cot because I don't wanna break down all this booth and I don't want anybody trying to get up in the shop because the booth, like I showed you guys before, comes into the shop, you know? And uh, I don't want to break none of this down. I just want to, you know, I'll stay up tonight a little bit and do some stuff on it to get it ready. And uh, I'll spray it early, early in the morning with the, the base coat. And then um, I will be going from breaking this, uh, what I like to call the love tunnel now, down to... You know just zipping off the the main part around the vehicle and then when I get all this and I can lock up the shop I'm going straight to bed because <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be wore out but uh, that's the gig guys I just want to show you what we're doing today or what we've been doing along with the red trucks back out here um, for the cotton buff I'm gonna get doing that because everything's back to normal. Um, and then we're just gonna cut and buff that to fix the some of the drier looking spots, um, which we flow coated most of it out. Uh, and that's it, guys. I mean, we used the exhaust filter this time. It worked fairly decent. Didn't get like nearly as big of a cloud. It probably reduced it by five times. So I think the upgrade's gonna be getting another exhaust fan like this, the Vever 12 inch. And then I think I wanna do like a V together plenum. And then it goes into the same tube together so we have double the pull. But those fans are $170. So it's not like it's a cheap buy to just get a fan like that. You know, but um, I think it'd be best, and then I could put one on each side of the vehicle. That'll suck everything out. Because it wasn't really keeping up with the other fan blowing the stuff back to it. And we even built a separate um, overspray booth with that in it, so it would trap the overspray in that pop-up canopy and then have more time to suck it out versus it coming back into the booth which did help a little bit that's what that uh i don't know if you guys caught it when i walked down the side but back there we had it sitting on this little stool of mine and i cut a hole right here in the tarp and all this plastic was actually up at the time until the heat melted it loose and I had to finish off instead with tarps here. I had to do that because that's what I had. But uh, there you go. There's another one. Um, and we'll, we'll be back with the finish result when, uh, you know, we get her sprayed. Um, it's extremely hot in there still. Once it cools off in the garage here, I'm going to, in the shop, I'm gonna move the fan back in there to 
get some of the heat out and uh, that's what it is guys we just keep on going anyway peace prosperity down with the haters up with the participators um, we'll come back at you with another one soon and uh, we got some other things where we're going to be using the scan tool the Autel MS906 TS and we're going to be reprogramming some key fobs and um, doing some other stuff with it so I should I'll probably start making some more videos like that for like the scan tool so there's more about that particular scan tool out there and we'll probably be using the oscilloscope soon too um, and uh, the red Jeep is doing good. It's gone for good. It runs fine. We had to switch uh, the TCM and the PCM on it. And once we did, uh, everything started operating just fine. So that's fixed um, indefinitely until it breaks again on the guy that bought it. Um, and the trailer obviously is sitting right there. And waiting to be finished because we found another project before I could get to finishing that uh, but nonetheless you guys have a good day um, keep your head up and keep on pushing